Good morning, this is Rachel here again. A few months ago I made a video called uh, Jehovah's Witnesses Present a False Front and I discussed the November 2016 JW broadcast in which Garrett Loesch talked about lying uh, as opposed to them being the champions of truth and he defined what a lie was and basically said that a lie is a lie, you know, a small lie, a big lie, or a malicious lie, they're all lies, and that Christians should speak truth to one another. Although, after listening to what he said, I think maybe they feel they're only obligated to speak truthfully to fellow believers, but not to anyone else, as can be evidenced by this uh, um, recording I will, will play for you. Uh, it was posted by Dallas, Canada, and it was a court proceedings in, I believe, in Canada, where an ex-witness was suing the Watchtower, I guess, for, for lost revenue, um, because having been disfellowshipped and shunned, um, his former customers would no longer do business with him. So, anyway, this Watchtower lawyer who apparently he is a witness and serves at the Canadian branch, uh, he lied. He lied about shunning, the nature of shunning. Uh, he lied blatantly in court. Uh, after what Garrett Loach had said. And when you consider that, you know, the court is um, a superior authority, isn't it? It's a, something that's set up by the government to deliver justice. And the scriptures say that you should be in subjection to the superior authorities, that they only reward, they reward the good and they punish the wrongdoer, and that they actually act as God's minister. And if so, they work for him in seeing justice done. And if you take a stand against the superior authorities, you actually take a stand against the arrangement of God. So really, is it scriptural? For this watchtower lawyer, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, to lie blatantly to the superior authorities. Um, I will just play for you, uh, apart from the uh, court, where he lies, and it's really quite sickening. I hope you can hear this all right. I'll post a, a link to uh, Dallas's video um, in the comments below, or the description below I mean. Okay, right, here we go. Sufficiently repentant for his disgraceful conduct, and the congregation elders took the decision to disfellowship him. That word is used by Jehovah's Witnesses. They, Jehovah's Witnesses don't use the word shun or shunning. They yes, refer they to do. it as disfellowship, disfellowshipping, disfellowshipped, because that really gives the, the, the sense of what's taking place within this particular religious community. Disfellowship literally means no further spiritual fellowship. Spiritual? With the, with the Only? individual. And as I point out, sorry, Chief Justice. As I point out in paragraph 22 of my factum, the, the nature of the relationship then of a disfellowship person is not completely shunned. <laughs> the disfellowship person is able to come into the congregation, to the congregation meetings, they're able to attend uh, in the kingdom hall of Jehovah's Witnesses, they're able to sit wherever they like, they can sing the, the spiritual songs with the congregation. As oh, what do you do? As family members are concerned, normal family relations continue Liar. with the exception of spiritual fellowship. Lies. And the, the door is not closed to Mr. Well either. The person who is disfellowshipped can, after a period of time, ask to be reinstated in the congregation because that's the purpose of the discipline. But as I repeat uh, to uh, Justice Wagner had asked earlier, the appellant's position is that they're not above the law and that its decisions are never I think that'll do. In Telezone, this court... Isn't that disgusting? Um... But for one thing, they actually, I mean, witnesses will say, oh, shunning, oh, no, we don't shun. But in fact, if you look on their website, on jw.org, under the Frequently Asked Questions section, it actually does use the word shun. Let's have a look. Uh, 
see what it says here? Second paragraph. If, however, a baptised witness makes a practice of breaking the Bible's moral code and does not repent, he or she will be shunned or disfellowshipped. So showing the words are used interchangeably there. And of course, this article here, which is, I guess, mainly for interested people coming to the website to find out a little more about Jehovah's Witnesses, there's this very misleading paragraph here, which I've discussed before on a video, and I know lots of other YouTubers have too. It says, What of a man who is disfellowshipped, but whose wife and children are still Jehovah's Witnesses? The religious ties he had with his family change, but blood ties remain. The marriage relationship and normal family affections and dealings continue. That is an outright lie, isn't it? When a person is disfellowshipped, their family affections and dealings most certainly do change. Only if the disfellowshipped person is living in the same house with other witnesses are they permitted to have any conversation with that person at all and even then it's not to be a, a spiritual discussion only day-to-day -day matters that need taken care of so um oh, outright lie you know and normal family affections and, and the marriage relationship stays the same well if if someone has been disfellowshipped for apostasy for example and, and the governing body paint this terrible picture of apostates as being, being Satan's helpers in his evil kitchen. Yeah, that's what they actually said. How can a witness have a normal marital relationship with someone that's described in that way? How can a child have the same love and affection for a parent who's been described by the governing body as a helper in Satan's kitchen? You know, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, we all know that that is just an outright lie there. And to prove it, I've got some uh, quotes here from the literature that we all know very well. I'll read this one <clears throat> from the 2013, uh, January 15th, page 16. Really, what your beloved family member needs to see is your resolute stance to put Jehovah above everything else, including the family bond. Do not look for excuses to associate with a disfellowshipped family member, for example, through email. I've made these up uh, as uh, posters or flyers to either hold up when I'm informally unwitnessing in town or to sellotape to my car windows or whatever. Okay, so that's a good one. And of course we we all are very familiar with the video from the convention of 2016 where it had a video dramatisation of a, a young woman uh, who was disfellowshipped and her parents told her she must leave the family home. So she did. And for 15 long years they refused to pick up the phone when they saw it was her calling. Yet that brother in the court said that it was only spiritual association that was uh, cut off and that the person wasn't completely shunned. Well, we know, we know what really happens, don't we? Um, here's a couple of other really good ones. This comes from the Watchtower 2012, April 15th, page 12 says, what if we have a relative or a close friend who is disfellowshipped? Now our loyalty is on the line, not to that person, but to God. Jehovah is watching us to see whether we will abide by his command not to have contact with anyone who is disfellowshipped. Consider just one example of the good that can come when a family loyally upholds Jehovah's decree not to associate with disfellowshipped relatives. 
A young man had been disfellowshipped for 10 years, or over 10 years, during which time his father, mother and four brothers quit mixing in company with him. At times he tried to involve himself in their activities, but to their credit, each member of the family was steadfast in not having any contact with him. After he was reinstated, he said that he always missed the association with his family, especially at night when he was alone. But he admitted, had the family associated with him even a little, that small dose would have satisfied him. However, because he did not receive even the slightest communication from any of his family, the burning desire to be with them became one motivating factor in his restoring his relationship with Jehovah. And uh, that experience was repeated again in 2013 in a watchtower. Uh, watchtower, oh, I've got that one. Um, watchtower 2017 in October, page 16 says, Despite our pain of heart, we must avoid normal contact with a disfellowship family member by telephone, text messages, letters, emails, or social media. So, and that um, website, Frequently Asked Questions, said that normal family affections and dealings, normal dealings continue. No, it says here, we must avoid normal contact with a disfellowship family member. Anyway, I have some other ones here, but you get the idea. So what was Gerrit Loesch saying again about lying? Where do lies originate? They originate with Satan, don't they? Satan is the father and the champion of the lie. Something that this organisation has mastered so well. Uh, you know, a lawyer lying in court to the superior authorities about the nature of shunning. It really is absolutely disgusting. <clears throat> and it's no wonder that there is so much confusion among Jehovah's Witnesses about shunning. On the, the cognitive dissonance must be absolutely doing their heads in. On the one hand, they read material like I've just read from the Watchtower magazine saying to completely cut off the, the disfellowship relative having no contact with them at all and then you have people like this lawyer saying oh it's only it's only spiritual association that stopped you, you know so th there's this confusion um, I guess witnesses can choose to, to follow which they prefer you know uh, and then you get people judging oh so and so is talking to their family member and you know all this bitter backbiting and talking in the in the congregations and oh, I'm so glad I'm out of it. Anyway, um, I think I've rambled on enough so I'll say goodbye for now. Bye.